Hey guys, today's story is about a person with some rather bad abandonment issues. I have a long story to share, and unfortunately, it takes place across three years. So, I was close to my friend in high school, mainly because we took the same classes. After graduation, we lost contact. But eventually, my high school friend group got back together to play TTRPGs. The group was RP and story oriented, and we didn't exclude my friend on purpose, but my friend only liked writing stories and not playing games. So we thought that she wouldn't be interested, and yet, when my friend heard that we were playing, she wanted to join. And what followed was my friend being incompatible with the rest of the table, and occasionally overstepping social boundaries, and no one wanted to say anything about it. In the first half of the campaign, my friend, for one, wanted to play a cat person. A girl with cat ears, who acted like a cat. Creative. And I'm sure that would be fine in the right kind of table, but... No one else in our table was into this, and the DM was new and didn't want to say no. For two, the DM offered to us to partake in his world building, and my friend took the offer to create her character's home province, while disregarding the DM setting. In short, we got a Japan that was populated by cats in the middle of Europe. We also got a whopping 20 noble clans in a tiny village, on a tiny island, where nobility was supposed to be overthrown. The DM was also aware that this was also a mistake, but didn't know better back then. For three, well, her character was just a generic Mary Sue, from a family of Mary Sues. In her extremely long backstory, she had apparently slain a red dragon at level one, and the DM had told her to tone this down at least. For four, she wrote erotic fiction about her character and sent it to the DM, and of course she never once asked the DM's permission. For five, she had a kind of script for her character's story. Story goals are great, but she was upset when there were obstacles to overcome, and she ignored the plot hooks that were given to her if they contained hardships. But more than that, she was upset when her actions had consequences, and a very big example of this was when our group needed to access a temple to the God of Sacrifice. And only those who made a personal sacrifice could enter. Her character sacrificed all of her memories of her lover, but before she did this, it was made clear that she would never get those memories back. And after this, she was upset because her character could no longer have a happy ending. And in roleplay, she began asking extremely meta questions in hope of them leading to her regaining her memories. She was also incredibly hostile to me because my character was the only one in the group who didn't lose memories, as my character gave up her dominant hand. And we eventually had to convince the lover to give the friend's character, who is now a stranger, a second chance because my friend was so set on them being together. For six, my friend was extremely jealous, being a ranger in a group full of casters, but she was offered a class change, which she refused. Primarily, she was jealous about the high damage spells that I took from my sorcerer. She became convinced that sorcerers were overpowered in 5e, as well as being jealous about the stories unfolding for our characters. And when I agreed to become a champion to a forgotten deity, her character suddenly wanted to be a champion too, while being non-religious previously. And yet, while I worked to revive my deity's religion, she asked the DM for freebies, and on occasion, berated her deity for not taking action. And lastly, she was also a murder hobo. In combat, she got angry when she didn't hit the enemy, and she never cooperated with us in combat because she wanted to win alone. She also perceived our characters as ultimate good, and she wanted to shoot everyone who was not good. And she was upset when I stopped her from shooting random people, including a literal child. When we finished one story arc, the DM needed a break, 
and we talked a lot during that break about how everyone could improve. My friend said that she wanted to learn how to roleplay, and while she did change for the next arc, it wasn't all for the better. We ended up losing a player because they couldn't commit to another year of D&D, and my friend suggested a replacement. But this replacement was a person that only they knew. This person also happened to be a teenager while we were young adults, and the DM wasn't sure that this would be a good fit. I foolishly suggested that we should give it a try, but this newbie never talked. She didn't answer when we tried to engage her, she didn't pay attention, and on occasion, she would do something random and funny. The newbie left the group peacefully, after agreeing that D&D was not her thing, and my friend said to us that she had found newbie's behavior frustrating as well, and this bit is important, because ultimately, my friend was kicked for the same behavior. Fast forwarding a bit, a big bad dragon from my friend's backstory had returned, and my friend wasn't even eager to confront it, but I suggested that we should go. At this point, we were also level 15, so I teleported us over there ASAP. The province was on fire, but my friend shrugged, and while we were saving citizens, my friend saw the dragon and was invigorated. She told no one, ditched the party, and ran to 1v1 the dragon. She had also met the previously betrayed lover on her way, and they were both killed in two rounds of combat. Resurrection was extremely difficult, and after a long talk, we resurrected my friend's character, because she was living in a world of sunk cost fallacy. She literally said, If I don't get my character back, I will have wasted two years for nothing! Our cleric, who was of the god of death, refused to resurrect the lover. She said she had broken the rules enough already, and for the rest of the campaign, my friend was obsessed with bringing the lover back. And she would do anything, including evil acts. It was cool character development, except for the fact that she got angry out of character every time we pointed out her character was becoming evil. My friend had some okay roleplay moments, but more often than not, she liked to do things for shock value, and often, she would devalue others to this end. For example, she went around telling people about my character's illegitimate child with a politician because she found infidelity amusing. She also once watched my character be paralyzed magically, and then coup de grâce by a stranger. Moments later, she walked away and left my character in a puddle of her own blood. She had many rounds to react, but this was one of the only times that she chose to not metagame to help. Whenever I said my character no longer trusted hers, she took it as in real life hostility between us, and I didn't know how difficult it was for her to differentiate between the characters and the players until it was too late. Admittedly, I added to the negative mood at the table, and towards the end of the campaign, I wasn't looking forward playing with my friend at all. I came to the table in a bad mood, and got annoyed at small things. And through the campaign, at several times, we as players discussed what was going wrong, and what should be done. Every time it seemed that things were alright, they weren't. And when we ended, my friend revealed that the campaign had been so upsetting to her, she had cried for months after games. No one knew, because she lied about being alright. And now that we had the whole story, we talked, again. And at this point, we should have concluded that my friend was not fit to play with us. But we didn't. I took over as the DM, and invited everyone from the previous game. And I don't even know why I was so naive still. My friend was impossible to work with, she disregarded the lore I gave her, and she tried to disregard my homebrew races in character creation, after I explicitly explained that she can't take anything from the PHB. She refused to make a backstory, for which I only asked one paragraph. She also didn't want to be a cleric, but as the party had no healer, she offered to be one. She never enjoyed playing cleric, 
and never healed anyone but herself. And I asked her time and time again if she was happy with her character, and if she wanted to rather swap for her original idea, a monk. But she kept lying that she had always wanted to be a cleric, until I showed her screenshots of her original character plan. I also discovered that she cheated by not marking used spell slots and swapping prepared spells during in-game days. After about 10 sessions, she didn't participate in the story, and sometimes didn't even pay attention. I started to ask if she was okay, and after a lot of back and forth, she admitted that she was pretty upset by something that had happened in the game. I tried asking her how I could improve the game, and what I should change, but she never answered. And after some more weeks, I had to ask if she enjoyed playing at all, and she said that she didn't care about D&D. And at this point, it became clear to me that she only came to the table to hang out, while we were super story focused. She had most likely realized way back that D&D wasn't for her, but she wanted to not be excluded by her friends. I was very tired, and I had two options. Either I cancel the game, or she goes. And I chose the latter. I told her the reasons, including that she wasn't participating and was disruptive at the table. She was very upset that she was getting the boot for the same reasons that had previously been valid for booting someone else. And she tried to argue that I was not a true friend because I kicked her. And I told her that a true friend wouldn't force herself to sit through a boring activity every week and drag down everyone else's experience. She didn't talk to me for a couple of days because she thought I was terminating our friendship. And then we sort of talked it out. And we hung out doing other stuff for a while. And then, as one naturally would, we found a replacement player and the situation imploded again. My friend had been holding a grudge, and now she came back screaming how she was betrayed and replaced. We tried to explain to her that this wasn't true, and she asked me to define our friendship, which at this point, I just said, I've not talked to you outside of D&D after we graduated, we're acquaintances. She had, however, thought we were very close friends, somehow, and things just got worse from that. Our discussion ended up with her walking out for good, and ever since, I've honestly had fun playing D&D. Well guys, I'm going to come straight out and say that both of these people could have handled this a little bit better. But a lot of it does boil down to this other person, not the OP. If you don't like D&D, why are you going to force yourself to play it? You can always get new friends if your friends are somehow only ever going to associate with you if you play with them in D&D. But I don't even know if I would really say any of these guys were friends. They apparently didn't really talk that much outside of D&D or since they graduated, so like the OP said, at most they were acquaintances. I'm going to say that this friend had some serious abandonment issues. And quite frankly, I'm surprised that this went on for three years. I'm surprised that no one else really picked up on this or decided maybe they aren't a fit and they should be gently removed. But that's the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed the story. And as always, have a good one.